Hello everybody, my name is Robert and this is Review Clue and today we have another phone review but this time it's a little bit different. This is the Duji S95 Pro. Duji are a known well-known company for their rugged smartphones. This one in particular caught my eye because of its modular ability. Think back to the LG days where you can simply take one of the two modules that come with this phone slap it straight on the back to add new features such as in this case a hi-fi speaker and a battery pack. Now this thing is quite expensive at £375 with those two modules. Now that is I would suggest mid-range price. Is this a mid-range experience on a phone though? Let's find out shall we? This device comes equipped with the Helios P90 processor this model has 6GB of RAM, but you can get 8GB as well. It has a 6.3 IPS Full HD display at a resolution of 1080 by 2160 It has a 5150mAh battery, making it a little heavier than some other devices on the market at 285 grams. And on the front there as well, you've got that 16 megapixel front-facing camera. So going around to the back of the device, we can see those pogo pins to attach the mods and the magnets that will also help do that. A 5 watt wireless charger, a 42 megapixel camera and backed up by two 8 megapixels and those dual speakers along the bottom. Along one side you've got a fingerprint sensor, the power button, the volumes and that SIM slot. On the other side, that second SIM slot as this is dual SIM and the user assignable button and the USB-C port on the bottom there that's hidden behind. So of course, this does come with those two modules as well, that 3,500 mAh battery and the hi-fi speakers, which simply just clip onto the back. Right now, these are the only two modules you can get for this phone, but I don't see that as a problem. We're not saturating the market with useless add-ons. So here's just how those pins connect. Holding it close enough to the device, the magnets will do the rest of the work, aligning everything in place. Here we've got some size comparisons with the Doogee on the left, the Blank View A80 Pro in the middle and the Redmi 7A on the right hand side there. As you can see the two phones are pretty similar with that Redmi being dwarfed of course the Redmi did have a much smaller screen but you begin to see the difference when we hold it on its side there. This phone is very very thick and very very heavy. I can have two of those Blank Views and it will feel about the same weight as one of these Doogees. So here's that screen there and you can see the beautiful bright colours that seem quite well contrasted. I'm going to shut up now and let you listen to the music of these two back speakers. So there you can hear the difference that that hi-fi speaker makes as a mod. It really does completely change the soundscape and make it a much nicer, more rounded sound as a whole. So if you were going to be listening to music, I would suggest using that mod. So here are those synthetic benchmark scores from Geekbench and we're looking at about double the amount of processing power on both single and multi-core compared to the A80 Pro and that review will be in the top or down below if you do want to view it. But what does this mean for raw gaming performance? Well, it means quite a lot actually. Here's some gameplay of PUBG Mobile which is known to be a very very taxing game. This game is running at medium right now so it tried running it at a high and it just wouldn't. I was getting three or four frames a second so I brought it down to the medium and I mean, I'll let the plain gameplay do the talking. I feel like it really did hold its own. It felt responsive. It didn't feel laggy or slow. And, and for the amount of pixels that it's pushing and the DPI that it's pushing, I would say that it was a very competent gaming experience, especially for such a demanding game as PUBG Mobile. Speaking of that DPI, it is at around 403 pixels, which I would say is a very good amount, especially for a display of this size. This is quite a large display, I would call it even phablet sized. So it's definitely not a bad thing. 
And what this also shows off is how good that display is. The viewing angles are much better than I've seen on a lot of the other displays on these smartphones, especially against the Redmi, which had some of the worst that I've ever seen. These were comparable. I could view it from sort of the left or the right, and I didn't see too much colour shift. Out of the box, my unit came fully updated and this is running Android 9 Pi. There hasn't been a 10 update for this phone yet and Doji hasn't said whether there will be one coming. And in terms of security updates, it's fairly up to date as well. So I don't think we're running too far behind, maybe a month or two, but this isn't too much of a problem. Now, when it comes to bloatware and other apps that are built in, I feel like Doji did it right. They gave me utilities that allowed for junk file cleanup, RAM management and a lot more system management, but they also gave some toolkits. The toolkits were pretty odd, but also really interesting to me, because they were all apps that a handyman would ever need on site. For example, a barometer or even a picture hanging setting, which we're going to have a play with here. One of the most useful apps is that compass and it was really quick to calibrate and I found incredibly accurate as well, which I was very impressed by. So this phone is pretty good if you're going out for a hike as well. Here's that fingerprint reader and I must say I'm not a fan of where it's sat. You kind of have to click once with your thumb and then swipe it down. It's a very odd and unnatural action to do, but it's fast. It's fast enough to unlock the phone. I just wish that they'd incorporated that fingerprint sensor into the power button so it wasn't two separate movements. So of course I did have to go out with this thing and take some photos. It has that 48 megapixel camera on the back there so I, I was expecting good things and I was right for the most part. I did find that with this phone, you did have to spend quite a lot of time getting it just right. I've never had to fiddle with a phone so much and spend so much time taking a photo with a phone than I did with the Doji. Um, I wouldn't say that's a bad thing. It means you have to take a little bit more care over the brightness, its contrast and so on and so forth to get the perfect image. Uh, you can't just point and shoot this camera. If you do, the results will look something like this and that's not great. But if you do spend some time with it and get it just right, then the images are pretty incredible, like this one. So with those images in mind, I had high hopes for the video mode, but they were very quickly shattered, as you can see in this video. Yeah, it really was that bad, unfortunately. Uh, it was muddy, there was no clarity to the video at all, and just generally it looked really bad. So if you do want a video camera on your phone that you want to rely on to make YouTube videos or whatever, this is probably not the one for you. And as you heard on that microphone as well, it doesn't sound great. That's because of its rugged ability. It's very much like sticking that underwater GoPro into its case. It muffles the sound and makes it pretty much unusable. So external microphones only if you really do have to use it for a video. These images were also taken on the phone and you can see that actually it had a very good dynamic range, if a little contrasty in points and maybe a little too bright in some areas. It also has a fisheye lens, which you can see here, which might be useful in some scenarios. Now, of course, as this is a rugged phone, I did have to go out and put it through its paces, and we really did. I dropped this thing from a two meter height four or five times, and as you can see from the videos, they did not make a nice sound. 
like this phone is really heavy you saw the weight earlier it's nearly 300 grams when you drop it it drops with a fud and it is a an unnatural fud for a smartphone but actually it, it looks fine the the screen is exactly the same there's no cracks it's still responsive nothing is broken there are some scuff marks all around this case as you can see in the video but Honestly, I, I think that adds character to its rugged ability. <laughs> it, it was really nice. So of course, I did have to throw this thing in water as well. It was IP68 waterproof, so I didn't expect it to do anything. And as I suspected, it didn't. I could throw this into the water. And yeah, that, nothing happened. So I wanted to do push it up a notch a bit. I took this and threw it in the freezer. Yes. I froze my phone, um, left it in there for about half hour, got it out again, and yes, the phone was frozen. Um, but it all worked still. The only real difference that I saw was, of course, with the refresh rate of the display. With cold environments, the refresh rate will drop quite significantly, and you could see that. As an experience, it wasn't a nice experience to use. But it did all still work. I could still take photos, I could still take videos, I could still listen to music. The phone was functional, if feeling a little more sluggish than usual. So finally, it begs the question, for £375, is this phone worth it? Now, I find that quite difficult to answer, and it depends upon the kind of person that you are. If you want a phone that's rugged, that you can take with you anywhere you go and you don't have to worry about it too much, maybe you're a builder and you need something for the site, then this is great. As a media creation device, not so much. Media consumption, again, pretty standard. But this phone is big, it's bulky, it's heavy. There are many other phones on the market that for media consumption are a lot better. They're slimmer, they're lighter and they just feel a little more nice to hold. This is still a nice phone to hold, but it is very much a rugged phone to hold. In terms of its specs, I would say it's very well priced, and with that added extra gimmick of the two little modules that you can snap on the back, I would say that it's pretty good value for money. You just have to be the right kind of person to need a rugged phone. Anyway, guys, let me know in the comment section down below, what did you think of this video? Did you enjoy it? Do you want to see more videos like this in the future? Do you want to see more smartphones? Do you want me to move away into something new? I can totally do that and I'm happy to be versatile in what I show off to you, my audience. Anyway guys, my name has been Robert, this has been Review Clue and if you've enjoyed this video don't forget to subscribe, like and all of that stuff. Share this video around. Let's get as many people knowing about Review Clue and what I do. Anyway guys, my name's been Robert and I will catch you in the next one. Adios.